Hello everyone, Mocha Bear here, and welcome back to Mocha Bear's Hobby Den. Today's episode, I'm going to show you how to fill out a 5th edition character sheet for Dungeons & Dragons. However, this character sheet is going to be special, for it is my sister's character sheet. She has already instructed me on what kind of character she wants, and has given me free reign to choose the spells for her, as well as to roll her stats. So... Let's get into it. Using an older camera for here so I can use my newer camera to record the character sheet, so please bear with me. But for today's character sheet, we are going to go the traditional route, pencil and paper. So to do this, you will need a scrap piece of paper, four six-sided dice or four D6s, a character sheet, as well as access to the player's handbook. Now, like I said, you can buy one from your local bookstore, game store, or online from Amazon. I have mine right here. But we are going to be using the PDF version, so that way you can follow along with me. First thing we're going to do is our stats. There are a few ways to do this, however, I will go into those more detail later on in another video. For this, we are just going to do my favorite method, which is to roll 4d6. Now for this method, you roll 4d6. What we have here, a 1, a 5, and then two sixes. Now the method is you roll 4d6 and you drop the lowest number and you take the three remaining numbers and that is one of your stats. So 6 plus 6 is 12 plus 5 is 17. And on your scrap paper you write down the number. You are going to do this another five times so there will be a total of six times. Now I'm just going to go ahead and roll off camera and be back once we have acquired our numbers. Okay, so I have rolled an 11, three 12s, a 16, and a 17. Now, the way that I have my players roll for my games that I run, we do the same method. However, I add a little bonus where if their total, after they've dropped the lowest number, is lower than 10, then they re-roll because these numbers give us pluses and minuses. They give us bonuses. So we have an 11, which equals plus zero, because 10 and 11 is plus zero. We have three 12s, which are going to be plus one. So 10 and 11 are plus zero, 12 and 13 are plus one. 14 and 15 are plus twos. We do not have any of those. However, we have 16 and a 17, which both equal plus three. We're going to keep that aside for now because that is going to come in later. Let's move my dice out of the way and my scrap sheet. Now, this is a fifth edition character sheet that I have printed out from online. It is a free PDF and I will post the link to these down below in the description box. I understand it is quite a bit at first, it could be overwhelming. I taught myself how to do this and I've done it so many times, I make characters for fun now. Right, so first, let's go ahead and do the race, which is here. Now, my sister said she wants to use a water genasi. Lucky for her, the new Mordekainen Presents Monsters of the Multiverse book came out, which provided updates for the Water Genasi, so we will be giving her an updated Water Genasi. So for race, we will be doing Water Genasi. Sorry for the background noise. I am recording this late at night. Uh, water Genasi. They are a humanoid creature type, which doesn't come into effect when making your character. However, it 
comes to affect one playing later on. Uh, your size is medium or small. You can choose the size when you select this race. We don't need to worry about that right now. Speed. Your walking speed is 30 feet and you have a swimming speed equal to your walking speed. So we will put a 30 here where it says speed, but we will put a W line swim to indicate that it is our walking and swim speed because not all races have a swimming speed, but I can go into that in more detail in another video. All right, and since we are here on the race, let us look. These are some additional features. These are racial features you have. Acid resistance, you have resistance to acid damage. So we will put that here. On this character sheet, it has a, a box for racial traits. So we will put here, acid resistance. Now what that means is if you were to get hit with acid damage, you would take half of the damage that is rolled. Again, we can go into more detail about that in another video. Next, we have call to the wave. Call to the wave. Now this racial feature is pretty cool because it gives you access to some spells. Now you could be a class that doesn't use spells traditionally. However, this character that she chose will. And we are making this character at first level. So for the call to the wave, we will only gain access to Acid Splash, which is the cantrip. And I will show you where that goes later on. Now lastly for the racial feats, Dark Vision. Now the reason I like this character sheet, because not only does it have the racial traits box, or background feature box, or some of these other things, it also gives you, in the vision, a dark vision bubble to fill in. However, I will also, in the racial traits, write dark vision. All right, that is all for racial feats. Now we will go ahead and go to class and level. Class, she wants to be a wizard. Next to that, you would write a one. So as a first level character, you would write one. Now, I personally like to pick my background first because of some things that you gain from that and you don't want to conflict, which I will show you in a moment. So for background, we're gonna go with Sage. So we put Sage. Now, the reason I wanna do this first, skill proficiencies. We are proficient in Arcana, so we will go ahead and circle or color that bubble in. And History. Now in a future video, I will go into more detail on what these particular skills are used for. Before I forget, because I was, we want to break out that scrap paper that we had with our numbers. Now in the player's handbook, the races there give you some bonuses to your stats. For example, Dragonborn. Your strength score increases by two and your charisma score increases by one. However, if you noticed, in the Water Genasi page in Mori Kanan's Monsters of the Multiverse, it did not have that because there is a new method for increasing stats. For that, it gives you the option of increasing three of your stats by one each, or one stat by two and another stat by one. So we are going to most likely do one stat by two and another stat by one. Now, that is important because of your class. So, the wizard. We'll check out first level. We're going to have, go ahead and do this, proficiency bonus of plus two. On the character sheet, proficiency bonus plus two. Don't worry about this right now. Let's go ahead and just scroll down. 
quick build. I always recommend beginners check out the quick build. It is always the paragraph above your class features because it gives you recommendations on what stats to focus on. So for wizards, first intelligence should be your highest ability score, followed by constitution or dexterity. Dexterity is for your armor and defense, while constitution is for your health. And the main reason intelligence is recommended to be first because that is what is used for your spells. The higher your intelligence, the more effective your spells will be. With that in mind, we are going to make intelligence our highest stat. Now remember, our highest stat we rolled was a 17, but we are going to add a 2 to that for the stat increase from our race. So that 17 is now going to become a 19, which we we'll put down here. Now remember I said 16 and 17 is a plus 3. 18 and a 19 is a plus 4. The highest you can go is 20, which is a plus 5. Next, our second highest number was a 16. Now I've already looked ahead and figured out the spells to take, so for that reason, I'm going to put the 16 into Constitution, and I am going to do that plus 1 to the Constitution, turning it to a 17, which will still make it a plus 3. Now we have three 12s and an 11 left. The 11 is going to be a plus 0. Most wizards do not focus on physical melee combat, which most of the time uses strength. So, because of that, we're going to make strength our dump stat, which will be 11, which will be plus 0. If we were to have had a 9 or 8, it would be minus 1, and so on and so forth. No one really wants to have minuses for their first time playing. It's no fun. So, that leaves us with the three 12s. 12 dexterity. 12 Wisdom, 12 Charisma, which is plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Now, class features, hit points, hit dice, 1d6 per wizard level. Now since we are making this at level 1, hit dice is going to be d6, total 1. And then this little box here says left, so we will just go ahead and put one. Hit dice, I will go into the, the use of those in a future video as well. Hit points at first level. Six plus your constitution modifier. Our constitution modifier is plus three. So six plus three is going to be nine, is our max hit points. Max HP is max hit points. And then here's current hit points. We will put 9 as we have not been damaged, that we are not in combat. Now, proficiencies. Armor. Wizards are not proficient in armor. There is a subclass of wizard that does use armor, but that's for a whole other video. It's one of my favorite wizards, though. Alright, weapons. We have weapons here. Simple. Martial other. So we will go ahead and start bubble in the other. I'm going to fill these out and we'll be right back. Alright. Daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaffs, and light crossbows. Uh, tools. None. So we leave that blank. Saving throws. Intelligence and wisdom. So intelligence and wisdom. Again, I will go into more detail on these things in another video. Skills. Choose two from Arcana, History, Insight, Investigation, Medicine, and Religion. Now, this is why I went ahead and chose my background and looked at the skill proficiencies I gained from there. Because Arcana and History, I already gained from my background, Sage. Here, those are two options. If I were to have chosen those here and then go there, but like, oh, well, now I need to go back and pick another two. Doing it this way, you already have that done. So, let's see here. We definitely want good insight as a wizard. 
we're not strong physically. We want to be strong mentally, at least. And then we have investigation, medicine, or religion to pick from. Investigation. Investigation would be really good. All right. Now that we have done that, on to the next page. Equipment. You start with the following equipment in addition to the equipment granted to you by your background, which we will fill out later. So we have the option of quarterstaff or dagger. We will go ahead with dagger. We will go to the inventory page. So we are on the inventory page. We are going to go with dagger because of the style that she wants to use. We will, a core staff would be too bulky and requires strength. When a dagger, you can use your dexterity. Now, a component pouch or an arcane focus. Now, a component pouch is literally a pouch that holds all the material components required for spells. Some spells require material items, which I will get in another video. Uh, but for this, she told me she wants a wand or a rod of some kind, a little staff. So we will go with an arcane focus. And later on, I will show you what is available as arcane focuses. So I will leave a dash there to know to go back to it. Next, a scholar's pack or an explorer's pack. Now, depending on what style of game you go with, it will help determine what pack you go with. I always highly recommend asking your DM, hey, which of these would you recommend I take? Because if you're doing a heavy RP style game, the scholar's pack would be very beneficial. If you're going more into a combat survival focused game, you want the explorer's pack. So for this, we will go with the Explorer's Pack. Because it also depends on what you plan on doing. If you plan on traveling around, Explorer's Pack is very beneficial. And there are more items in the Explorer's Pack. So we will go ahead and do this to indicate the items that will be in the Explorer's Pack. And there's going to be a few that will go in here. Since we are on this page, age, height, weight, eyes, skin, and hair. For age, she said 19, which fits the setting. Her character is to be exploring for the first time, leaving her, her city. Height, 5'3". Weight, 128 pounds eyes pearl white skin she wants seafoam green I know my handwriting is not pretty and hair she wants teal. And for character name, she said she wants Midori because it means green in Japanese. So Midori. Now your character's name can come from any form of inspiration. In most books, they give you examples of names for those races. Uh, there are even websites you can Google or whatever search engine you use to find names for different races. All right, and now the last item, before I forget, is Spellbook. Now, Spellbooks are unique to wizards, although warlocks can have a Spellbook, because wizards write down all the spells they learn and find into their book, then they study it, of course not, you don't have to role play that, you just say, okay, these are the spells I learned. But you study it and memorize a certain number of spells. Speaking of which, 
Spell casting. At first level, you know three cantrips of your choice from the wizard's spell list. You learn additional wizard cantrips of your choice at higher levels as shown in the cantrips known column of the wizard's table, which we scroll back up. Cantrips known, three. Now, however, remember, because of our race, we already have a cantrip. So we will be ahead of the game and starting out with four cantrips. So we will go ahead and write down the first one from our race, which was Acid Splash. So we will write Acid Splash. And then I like to make a note. I will put little here and right racial spell so that way I know I've already pre chosen the spells so I'll be right back once I have them written down all right so we went with friends minor illusion and ray of frost acid splash and ray of frost are combat cantrips so you will always be able to deal damage and friends and minor illusion are more for role play aspects, but can potentially be used in combat. Scroll back down, and this goes into details of like what your spell book, uh, how it operates, and what you can do with it. But we can do that another time. All right, spell book at first level, you have a spell book containing six first level wizard spells of your choice. Now near the back of the book, there are tables with spells four specific classes. There is a wizard's table which I can show you all later on in another video about spells. But I've already chosen these spells so I will go ahead and write them down and I'll be right back. Alright, so we went with Charm Person, Disguise Self, Find Familiar, Mage Armor, Shield, and Silent Image. Some of those spells were chosen specifically because of the kind of wizard she wants to be, the Arcane Tradition, which you get at second level. And that will be in the next video that will be uploaded. We'll be leveling the character up. Right. Now, for spellcasters, some only have access to spells that they can prepare. Now, to find this out, you need to find, in, for example, the wizard, preparing and casting spells. We are going to move down until, here we go, second paragraph. You prepare the list of wizard spells that are available for you to cast. To do so, choose a number of wizard spells from your spell book equal to your intelligence modifier plus your wizard level minimum of one spell. So, our intelligence modifier is plus four, plus our wizard level, which is one. So, I like to make a note of that. Prepared spells equals int or intelligence mod for modifier plus wiz or wizard level. So for now, our intelligence modifier is four and our wizard level is one, so we will have five of these spells prepared. Off the top of my head, I know that this spell here is a ritual spell, so I will go ahead and make a little note here what they are. R means ritual. Ritual spells can be casted even if you don't have it prepared, it just takes longer to do so. So for that reason, we will have Charm Person, Disguise Self, Mage Armor, Shield, and silent image prepared. I'm back. I had to switch out uh, SD cards. The older camera is ran out. All right, so scroll down. Spell casting ability. Intelligence is your spell casting ability for your wizard spells. So, spell casting ability. Now you can either write out the word intelligence. Or you can just write INT for int for intelligence. Spell save DC equals 8 plus proficiency bonus plus your intelligence modifier. Our proficiency bonus, remember, is plus 2. And our intelligence modifier 
is plus four. So that's already there, it's six. So we have six plus eight, which is going to make our spell save DC 14, which is a good number. Now for spell attack bonus or spell attack modifier, as it says in the player's handbook, spell attack bonus on the character sheet. It is your proficiency bonus plus your intelligence modifier, which we already know from doing the spell save is six. So we write plus six. So when you roll to attack with a spell, you will add six to whatever you roll in your die. Now, of course, spell casting class, wizard. Now, we are done with the spell sheet. Let's go ahead and bring back the first sheet. Go ahead and write the character name on here now, which was Midori. And before we forget, alignment since we're already here. Alignment pretty much typically decides on how others in the world perceive your character. Now based on how she told me she wants her character, we will go ahead and do neutral good. Uh, you can write out the word or I just like to write NG for neutral good. And since we're here, initiative. Initiative is used to determine when you go during combat. It is based off your dexterity modifier. Our dexterity modifier is plus one, so initiative is plus one, which means you will add a one to whenever you roll a d20 for combat. Now, armor class, or AC, as it's referred to most of the time, typically is a higher number than what it's going to be for this character, because most characters wear armor. Most classes wear armor. Since the wizard doesn't wear armor, it is going to be 10 plus their dexterity modifier. Since the dexterity modifier is one, it is going to be 11. However, the spells I picked, two of them help increase that. So that is why I was okay with having a lower AC. Now, later on, when you level up, you're able to increase your stats, which if you were to increase your dexterity, will increase your armor class. Now, back to here. Level 1 features spell casting, which we already went through, and arcane recovery. So let's scroll down to see arcane recovery. You have learned to regain some of your magical energy by studying your spell book. Once per day, when you finish a short rest, you can choose expended spell slots to recover. Spell slots can have a combined level that is equal to or less than half your wizard level rounded up, and none of the slots can be 6th level or higher. So, we are going to write that down in the class features. Arcane Recovery. So we are not finished with that, in fact, because I forgot. Scroll back up. My apologies. Spell slots per spell level. First level first spell slots, two. So that means we have two slots available and we have not expended any slots. So what that means is we can cast two spells before we are out of first level spells. However, we are still able to cast these each turn because cantrips are free spells. So typically, because of your two spell slots, Whenever you cast two first level spells or a first level spell twice, you are out of first level spells. You cannot cast any more until you take a long rest. However, Arcane Recovery means once you take a short rest, you are able to recover one spell slot. Because it says equal to or less than half your wizard level rounded up. Since your first level, half of that is 0.5 rounded up is one. We're almost done. Bear with me. Now, back to the background page. Sage. We already did skill proficiencies. Languages. You get two of your choice, which does remind me. I forgot. Our race. Typically, your race gives you one to two languages you know. However, the new book, you get to choose. However, the first one is common, and the second one is of your choice. So, we will go ahead 
and do languages. For languages, we will do common. And then primordial. Because that allows you to speak to aquatic creatures. Because it gives you access to speaking to elementals and things like that. Um, and because her race is an aquatic creature, they have the dialect of Aquin, which Primordial will give you access to. Now, for Sage, language is two of your choice. Let's go with Elvin. And then let's go with a fun one, Draconic. And the reason that I'm going with Draconic is because there's something that she asked to have in her story, and it would make no sense to not give her Draconic. Now, equipment. I will go ahead and read it to you, and then I'll write it down off camera. A bottle of black ink, a quill, a small knife, a letter from a dead colleague posing a question you have not yet been able to answer, a set of common clothes, and a belt pouch containing 10 gold pieces. All right, so I've written it all down, except for the gold. Because that goes on this character, on the front portion of the character sheet. So we have CP for copper pieces. We have SP for silver pieces. EP for electrum pieces. GP for gold pieces. And PP for platinum pieces. So the background said we get a pouch of 10 gold pieces. So we will go ahead and write 10. Now, another fun thing. Background gives us role play things. Uh, speciality. What was your speciality as a sage? For this, we went ahead and said wizard's apprentice. So back up here. Wizards Apprentice. <clears throat> we scroll down and we have a feature called Researcher. All backgrounds have a feature which give you benefits mostly for role play, but some of them can be used for combat. But for this, background feature is Researcher. So there another thing that your background gives you is personality traits ideals bonds and flaws so move back to the second sheet personality traits now depending on how you're doing this it can be either one or two personality traits if you were to use roll 20 it asks you to pick two but typically for paper we would just choose one. Now, you can either read through or you can roll for these things. I'm gonna go ahead and look off camera and then I will be back to let you know what I am determining. All right, so if I know her well enough, she would enjoy this personality trait. Number six, I speak slowly when talking to idiots, which almost everyone is compared to me. Next, ideal. Ideals each at the end show you what they what alignment they recommend you are for these. Now we went with neutral good. Neutral is knowledge. The path to power and self-improvement is through knowledge. Good. Beauty. What is beautiful points us beyond itself towards what is true. I think she would like that. Beauty. Number two. There. Sorry, my face is behind this light most of this video. Next. Bond. Now, for bond, this is a difficult one. So, what you can do 
is roll a d6. So, we're going to move these aside, and we are going to roll a d6. Number two. I have an ancient text that holds terrible secrets that must not fall into the wrong hands. Okay. Now, with that information, a DM could use this to incorporate your character into the story, into the world. So, an ancient text that holds terrible secrets could, and since she is a wizard's apprentice, let's say that her master or instructor found a text and stole it from an evil mage and the mage is now trying to get it back sending out their minions to find it she could be on a quest to find her master or instructor mentor trying to find out why this text was sent to her lastly flaw here's a fun one number two most people scream and run when they see a demon I stop and take notes on its anatomy. That sounds like a fun one. All right, we are almost done. Almost done, everyone. First, let me go ahead and show you a few things. First, let's go to the Arcane Focus, which is here on this page. Arcane Focus, crystal, orb, rod, staff, or wand. She wanted a wand or a small staff or rod. So, because her inspiration is Magical Girl, like anime style Magic Girls. So, we will go ahead and give her the rod as her focus. And it will be up to her to determine what it looks like. Does she want it to be designed like coral with a conch shell on top? Up to her. And then for the Explorer's Pack, go to this page, Equipment Packs. The Explorer's Pack, now I'm not going to read everything in it, but if you want, you can pause it and take a look. Now what's left is Attacks and Spellcasting, which is this section right here. For that, we only have a few things. We have the Dagger, Acid Splash, and Ray of Frost. So, name dagger and of course if you want to make it more personal you can actually even name your weapon and put the name there attack bonus let's look at the page let's see here near the top dagger damage is 1d4 piercing its properties are finesse light and throne so because it is finesse you can use strength or dexterity we want to use dexterity because it's plus one versus the zero for strength so for the attack bonus, we take the dexterity modifier of plus one, and because we are proficient with daggers, we will add plus two, so that is a total of plus three, which means you will roll d20 when you attack, and you add three to whatever you roll. For damage and type, daggers deal 1d4 piercing, so for damage we write 1, D4, and because we are using Dexterity, we will add 1, and the damage type is Piercing. Now for the Cantrip Acid Splash. Now what you're seeing here are levels of Wizard Spells. And on the right, you see Spell Descriptions. First one is Acid Splash. So. Casting time is one action. The range, you can go up to 60 feet. Components are VS, which is verbal and somatic. So you say something and you do something with your hands, or since she has a, the rod, she'll do something with the rod, like just bam. And duration is instantaneous. So you hurl a bubble of acid. Choose one or two creatures you can see within range. If you choose two, they must be within five feet of each other. The target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw. So let's go ahead and write the name, Acid Splash. And it's a dex saving throw. So we will write D-E-X. So we know they need to make a dex save. 
and the deck save, instead of having to go to your third page to see that's 14, these character sheets have little spot down here for spell save DC. So we write 14, and then your spell attack bonus is six. So we will go ahead and write plus six. So now you don't have to go to that page constantly. You just look right below. Now, make a dexterity saving throw or take 1d6 acid damage. So we write 1d6 acid. And when you reach 5th level, it will increase to 2d6 and it will increase at higher levels. Next, we will do Ray of Frost. All right. So, Ray of Thought, <laughs> Frost. Ray of Frost, one action, 60 feet. Again, verbal, somatic. Duration is instantaneous. A frigid beam of blue white light streaks towards a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack against the target. So, that means we will be using the spell attack bonus. So, we will go ahead and here in the attack bonus write plus six. So you will roll d20 and whatever you roll, add six to it. On a hit, it takes 1d8 cold damage and its speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. And the damage increases when you reach higher levels. So we write 1d8 cold. And then I like to make a little note, half speed. All right, so lastly, we will go ahead and do the saving throws and skills to fill in. We have strength saving throws. All we are doing is if the bubble is not circled in, we are dragging the number right on over. So we have plus zero, plus one, plus three for constitution. Now intelligence, because we are proficient with it, we go ahead and grab the four for intelligence. And before we write it down, we add two because it's prof we're proficient. So four plus two equals six. And then wisdom, we are proficient again. So that two is automatically gonna be added plus our wisdom, which is one. So that's going to be plus three. And charisma, we're not proficient, so plus one. Now for the skills. Same concept. Acrobatics, it tells you right here, dexterity. So that is a plus one. Animal handling is wisdom, plus one. Arcana is intelligence. That is a four, but remember, it's bubbled in. So that means we're proficient. So we are going to add that too. So four plus two is six. And then so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these out off camera and be right back. All right, so this is all filled out. Remember, if it does not have the circle colored in, you just use the plus number or minus number if you are one that has minus. You take that number and you just put it in the spot. But if the circle is bubbled in, then you take the number, the modifier, and you add your proficiency bonus to it to fill that in. Lastly, passive wisdom perception, or as we call it, the passive perception. It's always going to be what your perception is, which is, in this case, plus one, and we add that to 10. It is always going to be 10 plus whatever your perception is. So in this case, our passive perception is 11. We're not very perceptive right now, but that can change when we level up later on. All right, so now that that is all done, just you want to take a look at your character sheet. Make sure you have everything filled out that you need filled out at the level you're starting at. So I'm going to check everything, and I'll be right back. I hope that was beneficial to you all, and like I said, I will be doing a second video and it will be showing how to level up a character. Now I will be doing another character sheet. Um, I'll do a one from the player's handbook so you can all follow along more smoothly and see more of what you'll be dealing with as a first time player. 
However, like I said, this one was more dedicated to my sister as she is interested in the game and the hobby now. So she gave me what she wanted and I just filled it out for her. If you have any questions, need anything clarified, please comment down below or reach out to any of my social media here and I will answer them. I do apologize for the length of this video. It is kind of time consuming making a character, but once you get started playing with it and building your character's story, breathing life into them, it'll all be worth it, trust me. Please, if you haven't already, check out my last video, which was an introduction to D&D and what's needed to get started. Again, I hope this video has been helpful to you, and I look forward to continuing on with this series. Until next time, please hobby on.